black painting. And the black painting started in 2007, in August. Um, it started at a time in my life when I was really concerned about um, having some sort of attachment to paint. And so a lot of my friends are starting to get jobs and married and all that stuff. And, and a, a lot of people are really interested in art, but then you know life happens and they sort of move away from those, those fields. So I wanted to have a personal connection to a piece for the rest of my life and also to paint. So it's an homage to Sunday painters too. I mean, painters who just like the act of painting, even though maybe a landscape or something that's been done a million times, you know. There's something about the performance in general. So uh, I like the fact that there's no aesthetic decisions that I have to make. So it's like you wake up in the morning and you don't have to worry about what you wear, what it's gonna be. It's just the act itself and it's very simple. Um, so every day, I should explain, I just paint this black painting with one layer of paint on top of it. So um, since um, October of 2007, it grows about a half inch on all sides and also above as well. I just put one solid layer of flat, uh, black latex paint on both of the sides. So my projections is if I live to be 80, and hopefully I don't die soon, uh, it'll, it'll probably be about four feet by four feet because it exponentially gets larger. Uh, and it already is about 30 pounds, give or take. So, at the time period uh, that I started, I was also interested in artists like Ed Reinhardt and all of his black paintings. So, Reinhardt uh, in the 1950s was working on these monochromatic black paintings, but uh, he spent the last five years of his life just repairing those paintings. So, I was really interested in where he started as an artist and where he ended. And it's very similar to a lot of artists at that time. Yeah, I mean, even later, you know, artists such as um, you know, Frank Stella, all these guys who have made minimal black paintings for different reasons. But uh, yeah. So this is my contribution to that dialogue and to that um, theory of endgame painting. But I thought it would be funny too, because it's sort of attached to my life, that it would have some sort of positive thing instead of the, sort of end, of the end of the road, you know, painting. Without further ado, we'll uh, go one layer. And a lot of people ask, you know, this is a um, painstaking thing for me, but it's it's really not that bad. I mean, it's it actually takes less time than brushing my teeth, you know. And so it's like, but it's more the act in general, just always keeping track of the piece and always having it somewhere. And there's a lot of things that I think about in the piece. I mean, even like stalactites and stalagmites and capes or drippings, but also the. Um, even like the Buddha belly or other like bronze sculptures that are um, constantly touched and then they just sort of, over time, it's this repetitive motion of, you know, thousands of movements on top of this small surface to create this effect, you know, and um, you can just sort of see and, and you may not, you may not know what the meaning of the piece is or what any, you may not know Ed Reinhardt or anything else, but you'll still get some sort of sense, I think on some level when you see this piece that it's been worked. A lot. So, um, mainly just from that reference, I, I went through a whole like month thinking about white or black, but um, and I may still do a white one. But the black was a reference to Ed Reinhardt and, and again all those guys in the '50s who were doing that end game thing. Um, and some made white paintings as well. You know, I, Robert Ryman, for instance, is an influence. That so I'm going to be here every Saturday, and you should be here too at 1554 Market Street. And I'll be doing this performance, and everyone's welcome. And it takes about 10 minutes, so if you have time, you can check out the show and see the space, but also see my performance of the Black Painting.